open a one click download a one click what type of issues you face while you are uh, you are downloading it or after when you are opening it because it linked with the java and there is a uh, some sort of issues so in today's video i'm going to show you that how you are going to download it or you can use the uh, web services of the cs spectrum one click so when you are going to open the one click first you have to open any browser the two browsers which were supported uh, properly supported with the cs spectrum is the firefox and the google chrome so i'm just opening it in the firefox <clears throat> in the text bar you have to write the ip address of the machine where you have uh, deployed the cs spectrum cs spectrum one click now you see there is a uh, login credentials they were asking for so you have to write the uh, credentials oh, sorry okay now you see there is a lot of options over there because i was open it with my administrator as you see there is an option where my mouse is it's install jre when i click on it it gave me some details now you see it was showing me that you can download the java runtime environment version 8 update 292 so let's check it out that this is supported or not this is the first step when you are uh, running a one click so click on the administration tab and when you open it you saw a lot of options over there in this option first go to the one click client as you see the only version which was supported over there is this one if you need to add modify or remove any of the java version uh, you have to add it over there that this is the parent version then the base version and then add the sub versions and you can also allow the new versions as well but it was not recommended by ca2 or a broadcom to enable this option because as you all knew that the current version of java is java 10 but we are working with the java 8 so there is a big gap and a difference between these so you are not i am not allowing you or i am not giving you advice to do such things so you can add the old features and the old versions as well so here you can add the java uh, compatibility first check the compatibility of the versions and you can add these then you can check get back to where we are add the add the home page and install java when you download it now you can install it when you install it, you have to do the configurations of the Java. Do not run the new method which a CA was recommended right now. It's it's a, a, there is a lot of bugs in this new method. So you just have to go with this this same version, Java runtime environment version eight nine oh two. Now, as you see, there are the Java control panels. Back to the security. In the security, you have to enable all the IP addresses which is going to communicate or are the IP addresses of the CS spectrum or the one click as the new version of the CS spectrum was the, not a standalone system it is a distributed one uh, in which you are going to install the one click or a Tomcat services on one VM and CS spectrum services on the other VM so you have to add those IP addresses over there okay when you do it just click on the start console and when you do it it is going to install oh sorry not install it's going to download the one click files jnlp files over there just double click it do not do the update because we are using the older version of java 
click later and now your cs spectrum is going to start it took some time uh, depend upon the uh, db size along with the network speed as uh, my cs spectrum db size is too high so it sometimes it took a lot of time to open this application then click on the run with the latest version yes now it's going to initialize my one click when it initialize it you have to add the credentials and then click ok as the CS spectrum running right now is the distributed one there are multiple spectro servers and a single one click which is communicating and this spectrum one is the is my main primary okay now you see on the right side you are going to check you are going to view all the alarms which was an illicit or which uh, were occurred against the devices which were discovered in my first spectro server and at the bottom of that you can view the component details you can also do the changes in this view like you can disable the status bar as you see in the in the bottom you are watching this thing if i full screen you are watching this thing that you are logged in as administrator at with this IP, you can change the change the password from there as well. Then, if you click on the view, the navigation navigation is your left side where you are there where your whole topology or the list was there. Then there is a third option which is content. Content is the part where you can view the list option, the alarms, client alarms, and all these. Let me show you. You see alarm topology topology of this container these 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 folders are called containers in the ca one click or ca spectra then there is a list this list is showing showing me the number of devices which will lie in this container if i click on the main universe you see it was showing me the all container names just the container names these are not the ip addresses you see there are no ip addresses over there so when I click on any of the container in which my devices were discovered, you can view it over there like this. Okay. And in the bottom of that, whenever I click on any of the device, it shows me the component detail of that device. Then what are the general information? Then CS spectrum configurations against this device that on which port is going to communicate. What are the SSH ports, system OID? Then there is an option which is called threshold and watches. If you click on the threshold, you see is going to show you two two options cpu and memory by default they were enabled but it's your choice you can set any value you like for your cpu alarming and for the memory alarming you can do it over there but if i want to configure an alarm or or i want to configure a, a configure a different inload error discards against the port numbers or any port which was discovered again uh, which were there in this device then how i'm going to do it let me open any of the device component right click on the de that device and move to the component details and when you do it there is again an option which is threshold and watches but it is going to show me the threshold and watches of this device but i want to check check it against the interfaces or the ports okay so there is an option interfaces expand the tree select any of the port and then do the same method right click component details when you do the right click and the component details it is going to show you these options just again back to the threshold and watch it in the threshold now you are going to see the components which will lie against the ports not against the devices because we have, we don't want any information or there is no method in the world who's going to give you the total utilization 
there's no device is going to send you the such data in the SNMP. So you have to do it on the port, on the individual level. In the by default, they were all zero, but you can set it whichever, whichever count you like. But they were all in percentage, except this total packet rate. Okay, so you have to select the value in the percentage, not in the accurate value like the 100,000, 200,000. No, you are going to use like 45%, 75%, 80%, something like this. So you can set the thresholds of these components like the interface components or interface matrices over there. And now how you are going to check the uh, events of any specific device. Events means that the log occur on that device. SNMP logs, these are basically the SNMP logs. They are not the sys logs, not the information logs. These are just the logs which were captured against the attributes defined for against this device in CA spectrum. As this is, you see, this is a Huawei model. So a limited number of the these things are defined. Now you see there are some kind of events which were not defined in the CU spectrum. There are multiple options like maybe they were traps. They are not SNMP polling because the communication of, of the device and the CU spectrum is SNMP. But the traps uses the port of 162 protocol. 162 port and the protocol is TCP. So uh, this is these are the, just the traps. There is a there is a title over there trap type. Okay. As I go down the downward in these 32 events, I didn't see any SNMP event. So there is an option over there, filter sign, click on it and change the duration. But remember one thing. If your system is old or you are using standalone system, then do not use the duration of more than 24 hours because this this complete event system was worked with the archive manager and when you fetch a heavy amount of data, your archive manager create a bottleneck on your database and it's going to uh, doing the high buffer size and uh, getting stuck. And the last option, which was uh, like to resolve such issues is to restart the archive manager. And sometimes when your archive manager was of very high, high size or your DB was of very high size, like of around 80 GB or a 90 GB, it took an around 30 to 40 hours to reinitialize it. So I was not recommending any of the guys to fetch the events of more than 24 hours as I was using a very heavy system, so I can do it for an around a week or a two, but it took a lot of time to fetch such, such event. And if you cancel a call between them, it was not going to be canceled at the back end. So remember that part. If you if I was fetching a data of last one week and I'm uh, disconnecting my call, I was canceling it, then this call is not going to be disconnected at the back end. It was it, it these are the API calls and they were properly called at the back end. Archive manager calls such data from the DB. So whether you are going to close the window or not, it's not going to help. So whenever you are fetching data of more than one day, you have to wait until you got the proper result. Do not cancel the job. If you are going to cancel the job, then your archive manager is going to behave abnormally. If you are using the standalone system or the older versions of CS Spectrum. Remember that part. So I'm fetching a data from the 25th of December, 00 till today. And now it is fetching me the data and there were in around more than 1000 events. And you see these, these all are the events. These are not just the, uh, there is even not even a single event of SNMP. They were all traps. Yeah, the, these two are the traps. This trap is the network notification change alert. There's some guy who do the changes. Uh, who did it? This is the user who do the configuration changes on the device. This is the SNMP event. So you are going to view the events in that, for that format. If they were in that one, you have to uh, do the changes. 
in your backend files like the alert map file even this file and then you can convert this format this unreadable format into this readable format okay so uh, that's fine for today thanks uh, for your watching this video and hope you got some thing from this in my next video i'm going to tell you that how you are going to define or map the attributes uh, and then against that attribute how you are going to define the watches as i already defined a multiple watches for my optical power monitoring as i'll show you some alarm these are the alarms of the receivable receivable power and the transmissible power so these are all are the watches as you see that the threshold of watch Huawei, Huawei optical these are mine defined by me so in my next video i'm going to show you that how you are going to define or map an attribute and define an alarm against that that attribute so let's see in the next video and uh, don't forget to share your feedback thank you